Well, hi, everybody. Merry Christmas if you celebrate, because this is um, for the week beginning on Christmas Day. So, And, you know, it could be a little bit contentious week um, with the full moon coming right after Christmas and a Mercury-Mars conjunction that's um, in aspect to um to the Aries North Node. I'll show you all the details in a minute. But also we've got um, a Venus trine Neptune aspect and Mars and Mercury are going to be, um, well, they're still actually aspecting Neptune too. So there could be a lot of not kind of quite seeing things as they, as they really are. There could also be an element of kind of arrows and barbs coming at you. Um, I In my full moon video, I did recommend, you know, um, some self-protection kind of energy for the holidays, at least of saying, you know, take yourself out for a walk if things get a bit tense and things, because we can use this energy consciously. And I think a lot of us will, but um, I also think there's going to be um, some not using it consciously, shall we say. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where the barbs and arrows might come from. But also, no, it's kind of re quite reactive, especially on a full moon. Uh, Cancer full moon uh, is out of bounds. Mars is out of bounds. And, and things are a little bit heightened at the holidays, of course, anyway. And, you know, as I posted a funny meme on my Facebook, if you want to go and look at it about, you know, full moon mixed with alcohol on the holidays, what could go wrong? But anyway, let's be better than that. Right. <laughs> so um, I'm getting this out the way nice and early before I finish my preparations for Christmas. So this is uh, recorded on Christmas Eve. So um, let's dive in. So here we have the um the transit set for just after midnight on the east coast so you know some of you you'll be well into your day but i have to pick a start, starting spot for somewhere so just let's look at the energy of christmas day some of which i just posted about in my blog because it goes for a full 24 hours but i'm going to point out some things mars as I mentioned, is out of bounds and um, is going to exactly trine um, air, um, the North Node in Aries. At the same time, as we approach, as we get into Christmas Day, Mercury is going to conjunct the galactic centre again for um, for another time. And in fact, I should put the galactic centre on because we keep having these activations and mercury and mars though while i get that on are heading towards a conjunction um on december the 27th which is kind of happening under the full moon so i do want to kind of tell you that these things are really um uh activating each other in in many ways you know and whilst it will be um, either empowering or aggressive, so assertive or aggressive, um, it could go either way and, or it could go both. So depending on your chart, I'm putting Cersei on too because I find her quite um, important right now. Cersei the Sorceress, that's her down there. Okay, okay so um, early 2.01 a.m. Mars perfects the trine to the North Node at 22 degrees, the master builder number. And of course, Aries is Mars sign and this is fire and passion. And so, you know, this could be about taking a stand for yourself or just about letting those arrows bounce off and saying, no, this is who I am. This is really about your essence, finding out who you truly are and and actually taking a stand for that now. Um Anyway, yeah, I'm not going to go into it. You can go and read today's blog if you want. kind of want a little bit more about that. Meanwhile, we do have the Gemini moon um, actually still out or uh, going out of bounds today, I think. So let's have a look. Yep, the moon has moved out of bounds as well as approaching the full moon. 
So that's heightening the reactivity and emotional energy. And um, at 2.17 a.m., just after Mars trines the North Node, uh, the moon is going to oppose Ceres, right, on my moon, incidentally, um, and say, ha having a real good look at what really feeds you and nurtures you um, in regards to truth and knowledge and um, expressing it and expressing your voice. So that's um, a powerful opposition. So, gosh, and then Mercury will conjunct the galactic center at 4.21 a.m. After that, we have some uh, minor aspects for, for Christmas Day itself. But the moon is going to sextile Chiron and Chiron is stationing direct this week. And uh, so is Jupiter. So that's adding a bit more kind of tension as well and kind of wounds being triggered and activated, but also the potential to uh, kind of fill those cracks in the wounds with gold to really kind of move beyond it and just letting those arrows kind of bounce off you. It's kind of quite powerful. Then um, at 12.15 p.m., on um oh by the way the moon will also square nessus which has been revealing abuses of power by collective and individuals for some time the nicest aspect of the day though on christmas day is venus trying neptune that's usually called the rose tinted spectacles uh, things look, kind of look um, fuzzy and hazy but they can also lead to confusion and delusion too so, you know, but it is a nice one. If you are using this energy quite consciously, this is in Scorpio and Pisces, and it can lead to, you know, lovely, deep emotional bonding with those that you love. So, because even whether you celebrate um, the holiday or not, most of us are not working or whatever on that day. So the moon will finish up the day by a square to Juno, looking at our um, um, sacred contracts with each other. And then the moon will sextile the North Node and oppose Mars. And, you know, bearing in mind what I've looked at, talked about already, um, it could, you know, either lead to um, almost like psychic attacks or actually verbal attacks. Uh, but also it can it's creating a lovely wedge pattern to that Aries North Node. So or it can say it be about kind of getting in touch with your essence and saying this is who I am and you don't uh, get to define me or tell me who I am anymore. And um, and this is like here I am kind of energy. So and then the moon will sextile Eris and. Um, you know, Eris is a bit of a shit stirrer too. So, so anyway, 26, Christmas is over. <laughs> well, it's Boxing Day for us, um, British and other parts of the world. But um, the moon has moved towards the end of Gemini and is going to head into Cancer for the full moon at 7.33 p.m. on that day. And um, I did want to mention Circe. I said I was putting her in. Um, she's now left Pluto on his own at that anoretic degree. She, it's almost like she's moved into Aquarius to create sorcery and, and start at helping us to move into this age of air, this real kind of um, Aquarian, more egalitarian, more humanitarian energy, hopefully more equal and uh, you kind of get the idea with all of that as well. But and as we enter uh, Boxing Days, um, as I know it as, at 12.57 a.m., the moon will actually square Neptune as it's still opposing Mars and Mercury and Mars are coming back together again. Really, that's creating a T-square of um, both confusion and, and again, you, some of it may feel as um, barbs and attacks. So make sure you kind of have this um, uh, bubble of protection around you or you can, the, another thing that you can use is um, 
tool, a great tool, is asking, is this about me? Is this mine or is this theirs? And it's usually theirs. And then you just say, return to sender with love or return to sender with consciousness. In fact, you know, send those barbs back and don't do it angrily or nastily. Just let them bounce off. So that's a really good tool to remember with all of this. Another good tool to remember if you feel like reactive and like saying something angry or sharp or aggressive is just to pause, breathe or imagine duct tape over your mouth because <laughs> you don't want to be that person probably. Anyway, yeah, then so then of course the moon will also oppose Mercury in the galactic center. So this is kind of a very big mutable grand cross. A mutable is changeable. So it's about changing how you do things with Mars being out of bounds as well. It's a call to respond and react differently than you may have done in the past. Okay. And then the moon will conjunct Vesta focus commitment on your inner flame as the moon opposes the galactic center and then the moon moves into cancer at 10 15 a.m so quite early still out of bounds as well so we've still got the moon and mars out of bounds making things quite heightened emotionally right so moon in cancer in her home cancer moon is very about very much about emotional safety and security and um, and it's the crab, so it's about kind of pulling your shell down in um, healthy protection sometimes with, if you feel a little bit threatened. But it's also kind of about self-care, self-love, self-nurturing. So, you know, lots of that. Do whatever you need to do to uh, tap into that. Before the um, full moon, just before, um, as the moon approaches full, the moon will try and Saturn, kind of letting go of more of those self-limiting beliefs. And right, <laughs> so we have the um, full moon, and I did talk about this on my full moon podcast at 7.33 p.m. Eastern. Um, at 6.43 p.m., less than an hour before, um, where is she? I haven't got her on. Let's put Hecate on. Hecate, the way shower um, stations. There she is. Okay. Seven Virgo. Hecate stations retrograde at seven degrees 27 of Virgo and starts to revisit some of the degrees that she's been passing over. She's been showing us that really um, uh, the, uh, the way forward. Um, the direction, the way in forward in life at a crossroads, Hecate shining her candle, is to be a witch. And what do I mean by that? A woman in total control of herself. <laughs> or, and I do speak mostly to women, so we'll say that. But if you're a guy, you obviously feel this energy too. Really, it's about being whole unto oneself, whoever you are. And that means integrating mind, body, and spirit. So Hecate is going to be retrograde for some time, going back over steps, retracing what we've been learning. Hecate was Venus companion in the recent Venus retrograde. And she's been a very important part of that growth. So, but then right after the full moon, <laughs> uh, the moon will sextile Jupiter, kind of expanding everything even more. Huh. And then um, Chiron at 10.09 p.m. stations direct. So we have two stations and a full moon and Mercury and Mars opposing, <laughs> approaching that conjunction. It, it, it's kind of, it, it can be either really empowering and really kind of, this sense of really kind of stepping into your essence, but it can also be a little bit triggering. Um, so be aware of both and maybe kind of step into kind of feeling that sense of empowerment and just kind of standing there with a big smile on your face saying, this is me, this is who I am. I know myself more now. So into December the 27th, okay. 
there's a, a few less things to talk about after this. So this arrest should not take too long. Um, but on the 27th, uh, the moon is still in the sign of cancer, clearly, and sextiles, Hecate, that just stationed um, retrograde, opposes Pholus, who's been kind of taking the lid off a lot of kind of um, things that need to be changed and challenged and so on all at seven degrees. So if you've got things about uh, at seven degrees, then me, everything, then you're feeling it. As I said in my blog today, my charts lit up at, like a Christmas tree by almost all the aspects. And uh, and so um, um, I feel like I'm living it, so I can't tell you what's going on. Um, anyway, um, then Mercury over here comes up in squares, Neptune again. For the second time, Mercury squared Neptune on the way to a, um, the retrograde and now squares again for the second time and then will square again after the retrograde. That can be both kind of channeling energy, especially with this conjunction to the galactic center, but it can also be mixed messages, um, hearing things um, wrongly. Or just, um, but really it's a call to tune into um, your inner knowing and understanding and, and not paying attention to what's being told to you or um, anything. So kind of comes back to the defining yourself kind of energy, defining what's true for you. Nobody else is going to define that anymore, right? Um, the sun um, in Capricorn will trine Jupiter now. And Jupiter is just three days from stationing direct as well. So that's that earthy grand trine. If you watched my um, solstice or Capricorn ingress video, you'll know that the sun, sorry, that the moon at, um, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, the sun at zero Capricorn was trine the moon at zero Taurus. So this is very earthly expansion, embodiment, somatic energy. We are kind of really stepping into this more yin energy for want or divine feminine energy for want of a better word. Mars um, uh, at 1.21 p.m. Um, on December the 27th will actually try and um, Eris at um, the shit stirrer at 24 degrees. And so you might find yourself um, consciously kind of stirring the pot a little bit uh, to take a stand. I'm very guilty of that, but um, I do it um, for good reason for myself. But anyway, and then um, after Mars trines Eris, um, Mercury and Mars actually meet at 24 degrees, 21 um, um, Sagittarius. So they'll be in that trying to Eris still as they meet with Mercury retrograde, Mars out of bounds, Mars, the ruler of um, Aries. This is like, I'm not doing this anymore. I am taking a stand. I am, this is who I am. This is my essence. And I'm just, you know, not doing this anymore. <laughs> you know, I'll stir the pot in whatever I can to uh, wh whatever way I can to really kind of be who I fully am. <laughs> OK, so it's kind of very powerful it is to me anyway, because it's hitting all my chart. And then um, the moon still in Cancer will square Chiron that's also just stationed direct, um, kind of pushing the story forward Um fired up, passionate kind of energy. Um, okay, so we'll go into, buh, buh, buh. oh no, next day, 28th. And um, Mars and Mercury start to move apart from each other and, um, and they're still at that 24 degrees on Thursday, though. So, you know, know that Mercury will actually exactly try and um, Eris at 12.53 a.m. on December the 28th. So there's a lot of pot stirring and table shaking going on this week. 
And a lot of it is to do with new information coming from that galactic center. A lot of it is to do with people just saying, I'm done, not taking this anymore. Some of it can, as I said, come out very aggressively, but I've mentioned that already. So, and then, um, and then the moon still in cancer for most of the day until the evening of the 28th. The moon will move into fiery Leo at 7.23 p.m. But the moon will sextile Juno, our sacred contract energy, will actually square the moon's nodes, kind of pushing us, um, you know, to what we yearn for. But also, you know, we must remember that the, the south node is a, a good place to... You know, there's been a tendency to say um, North Node good, South Node bad. Neither is true. This is the dragon's head and tail. And we are kind of learning to be um, healthier Libra. And um, the pull towards the Aries North Node can lead to that aggressive, overly assertive energy as well. So, you know, we're kind of, you know, seeing this in all kinds of ways. Um, but, the, you know, the moon squares um, the nodes twice every um, lunar cycle. So it's not the biggest aspect, but it's just building on what we've done. But now the moon is waning or starting to lose light. And it's kind of saying it's time to yeah, br shake it off, <laughs> to quote Taylor Swift, and brush some of this off. Um, the moon will square Eris as well, of course, then. Um, other aspects that day, the moon will try Neptune. Um, the moon will try Venus. So we kind of got this watery grand trine uh, to Venus and Neptune um, that's uh, formed again. And it's kind of very heightened emotionally again. But now it's more in the way of shedding, releasing, beginning to let something go um 5 15 on um on the 28th mars will square neptune and then mars is going to start moving away from those aspects but has the galactic center to hit yet but mars square neptune that can feel like a bit depleted energy it's kind of like um you know right from early on the 25th to um to this Mars square Neptune on later on the 28th. It's kind of like it's been a lot. I need to kind of rest. Okay. Um, but um, and the, as you're resting, the moon uh, finishes up in Cancer with the monthly opposition to Pluto. Um, I think we've only got one more before. In fact, do we even have one more? This could be the last opposition to um, uh, Pluto before Pluto moves into Aquarius on January the 20th. So that's just taking you another kind of deep dive into the shadow. Then the moon moves into Leo at 7.23 p.m. And we are moving to the 29th, to Venus Day. So, you know, I would do lots of self-care this week. It's very, very heightened. But also, you know, it's a good opportunity to really kind of step into where you're going as we move into this year of big change into very Aquarian energy as Pluto moves in. But um, if um, you looked, um, I did a, a presentation for Renee Barabo, um on her YouTube uh, for um, um, uh, her I Am Symposium talking about I am and I talked about the age of air like stepping in big time in 2024 I'll post a at in the description and a link to the video okay if you want to watch it um I it was uh it went down really well the presentation so anyway Venus Day December um 29th is um actually the one of the biggest aspects of the day is Venus. Venus um, finishing up in Scorpio moves to that anoretic degree of Scorpio and sextiles Pluto and then opposes Sedna. And Pluto and, and Sedna are in an ongoing trine. Again, I talked about that in the um, 
presentation for Renee. And um, and so, you know, Venus is kind of like in Pluto's home or Mars home, whichever, you know, whether you use traditional or modern rulerships. Um, she is kind of saying, I am stepping into my power here. Um, and it's um, activating all these big, big harbingers of change that's coming. And Venus is saying, I am uh, becoming that really empowered divine feminine. And this is showing up in so many ways. You know, I talked about it again on today's blog. And again, it's not about women. But this is really about, um, you know, women, um, and I will use them as an example, not ashamed of what it is to be a woman in a very kind of fem so-called feminine way now. Lots of pink, lots of sparkle is coming. We saw it in the Barbie movie as well. Beyonce's Renaissance Rebirth Tour. And Venus um, is really, you know, I, I talked about the... Um, putting your crown on um on the in the recent venus retrograde there's something switched in the collective and it's not about um you know women being women that you know fit the male definition of what's good so um in one on the one hand there's the um passive barefoot in the kitchen kind of role model of women and then on the other hand you're only a worthy woman if you kind of are achieving in the men's world, you know, not doing it whatever your way. So, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, a, a woman who is a district attorney, for example, she's she's kind of more worthy than the than the other one who's the pop star. Well, how about they're all, you know, doing it themselves? Anyway, I think there's a vibe of... Um, of really accepting that it's okay to be vulnerable, uh, feminine, female, wear, you know, wear pink, <laughs> wear sparkle, but also to, it's okay to kind of be that, um, you know, more um, emotionally intelligent kind of energy as well, which has not been kind of valued. And that's happening in all of us. So again, you know, whilst I'm a feminist, it's not just about women. Anyway, the moon has moved into joyful Leo as well for Friday. So Friday's quite a nice day with Venus kind of taking on these big harbingers of change and saying, all right, so yeah, I'm taking my power back now at the end. And then Venus moves into Sagittarius at 3.23 p.m. on the 29th and starts to kind of go, yes, I can create this free, this more free to be me kind of energy. All right. And um, I'm not going to talk about all the minor aspects because I'll, I'll write about them in my sub stack. On to the 30th and we're nearly done. So on the 30th, there's really not any major transiting aspects, but the Leo moon does um, trine uh, Ceres and trine Chiron. This is kind of a burning off energy of anything that doesn't fill, light you up, doesn't fill you with joy. It's what feeds you and what nurtures you and what feeds your creative impulse and and, uh, you know, this is kind of, I can, um, you know, heal people, heal people. This is, I can do this. I've kind of filled my uh, cracks in the wounds of the heart with uh, that Kintsugi gold. And now I'm going, yes, here I am. Here I shine. Okay, so, um, you know, the end of the week is is kind of, wow. And then we get another fiery, um, actually, we get a, Oh, no, we get a T-square. <laughs> uh, so then the moon will come up and we'll square Uranus and square Pallas Athena. This is kind of saying, <laughs> uh, you know, rabbit hole energy and problem solving and creative intelligence. And I am going to do things radically different from now on. But the uh, and I'm not going to talk about all the other aspects, but, you know, there's a lot of fire um trining and energy kind of things like that to 
um, add to that creative spark of fire next Saturday. But Jupiter um, at 9.40 p.m. stations direct. And so at that point of the major planets, we'll only have Mercury, of course, and Uranus still retrograde. And Mercury is going to go direct on January the 1st. So Mercury is now in the zone of stationing direct as well to go to kind of go back over everything that we've been rethinking, reinventing, all those kind of things. And incidentally, um, as Mercury goes direct on January the 1st, I'm closing the doors to my private membership community, The Nest. So I'm not going to go on about it. But if you're interested in joining it, um, I'm going to put the link below. I'm closing the doors so that the people in it kind of become a real community, get to know each other. The doors will reopen again sometime around the um, um, Venus um, star point in June, June the 4th in Gemini. But I haven't decided at what point I'm going to reopen the doors exactly again. But if you want to join, um, you know, even to come and check it out for a month, um, I hope you'll like it. But, um, you know, you could join for a month and you're welcome to leave at any time. But um, check out the link below. Anyway, it's a good week to join it <laughs> because the doors are closing January the 1st. But anyway, and we do have a call on the 28th, actually. The calls are all recorded. But if you want to be on it live and ask questions and and, you know, get involved, um, we've got a call on the 28th. Anyway, um, so Jupiter stationing direct, five Taurus. We've been, Jupiter's been retrograde since, oh goodness, uh, when was it? Uh, <laughs> Jupiter went uh, retrograde on September the 4th at 15 Taurus. We've been really kind of digging in deep and reflecting on what abundance means for us now. And, and now Jupiter is going, is, you know, based on core values, on real rootedness and, um, and what material things really matter to us anymore. And now Jupiter is going to move forward and we can expand that sense of abundance in a more embodied way as Jupiter moves forward. All right. So on to the last day. But it's still a planetary shift. So you feel like these tides turning. It's a pretty big week, actually. Um, anyway. So the last day of the year. <laughs> um, or at least the calendar year. Uh, not the astrological year. December the 31st. New Year's Eve, so to speak. The moon is still in party-loving Leo. But does move into Virgo at 6.53 a.m. So, you know, that's kind of going to um, make the uh, party vibe a little bit more serious. But before the moon moves into Virgo, uh, the moon will trine Mars, trine the galactic center, sextile Vesta, as Vesta opposes the galactic center. So it's, again, it's really kind of bringing in more information about what's true for you and where you are going to go with all of this and then the moon moves into Virgo and um and will square Venus here and start to approach Hecate uh, and start to kind of really get us really um changing and become and moving towards that kind of more total control of herself kind of energy that witch energy and the Mars will conjunct the galactic center um, on New Year's um, Eve, uh, kind of saying, all right, yeah, Mars out of bounds, conjunct the galactic center. Let's kind of like really step into this, what, doing things differently, taking action differently. Mars um, at this point, I think is... Um, not far off his maximum out of bounds state um, um, energy, but I'll have to check that. But anyway, Mars as 
Mars conjuncts the galactic center. It's also opposing Vesta, your inner flame in Gemini about, you know, speaking up and responding and reacting to truth, knowledge, what you're learning differently. And then taking it out into the world. And as um, as that all perfects, the Virgo moon will oppose Saturn, um, looking at more of those self-limiting beliefs. But also it's that practical mystic energy of bringing those higher truths and higher love down to earth in a very practical way, starting with yourself. And um, uh, let me just finish up with these. Then the moon, of course, will try and Jupiter. And another bigger aspect of the day, though, is that Chiron and Ceres will will exactly try and each other, saying, you know, uh, the way forward really is um, through living your truth, living, being true to yourself. OK. And we'll just go into the morning of January the 1st and then we'll be finished and I will get this up and wish you a very happy holidays. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel while you're here. So into January the 1st, into the morning, of course, the moon is in Virgo. We'll conjunct um, Hecate, then we'll conjunct Black Moon Lilith. It's kind of like New Year, new start. This is very much about very much empowered divine feminine in many ways. We're seeing it with not only the rise of the actual women I talked about, but the rise of um, people who are, I'm not going to say worship because it's not about worshipping, but um, uh, are learning about and understanding and embodying, um, you know, the um, um, divine feminine, Magdalene, um, um, Mother Mary, you know, I'm even seeing posts from, um, uh, there's a guy called Jim Palmer on Facebook who uh, kind of left, He, I think he was a minister and he left the church. But anyway, he, he was talking about, you know, Mary Magdalene was, was not this kind of passive, receptive kind of creature. You, you get all those kind of things. Anyway, um, we're kind of rediscovering all of this energy. And into January the 1st, that all kind of comes to the fore. But at 8.26 a.m., let me get this one really um, exact. Okay, this is the last aspect because I'll be back at my desk doing... Um, and you'll have the, the next week ahead video then. But I do want to tell you kind of how we start the new year. Venus, you know, she's she's really coming kind of empowered as this Venus morning star that started way back in Leo. And Venus squares Saturn um, kind of saying, you yeah, know, you don't stop me anymore. <laughs> Your rules don't kind of uh, define me anymore. And that's, um, I have, have got to be true unto myself. So there we go. That's the week ahead. Um, let me, um, actually, let me just pull a couple of cards from this Tree Devia deck. Excuse my hair. I wanted to make this before I got on with the day. So, uh, you yeah, know, I'm not sharing till after my walk. So, yeah. I'll be true unto myself, right? <laughs> and by the way, I'll have a new calendar up on January the 1st too. Of the She Who Is calendar. She's on She Who Is Art on Etsy. Um, I now buy her calendar every year because I love it. Anyway, let's pull a couple of cards for the week. And this is from the Tri, sorry, Tree Devia Tarot deck. There's actually a link for 10% off if it, if it interests you using my code um, because they sent me the deck so that I could work with it. And anyway, let's pull. Oh. Mm. Oh. 
I'm liking this. Because we're in such a, remember there's no significant air apart from when the moon moves through air until January the 20th, when um, um, Pluto and the sun both move into Aquarius. The um, We're kind of in this um, somatic energy of really kind of learning what's true for us as, as humans, you know, in our body, mind, body, spirit, everything. Anyway, I got the Empress, the Venus card um, um, reversed. And so this is, it's time to focus on yourself and make self-care a priority. You might be too dependent on others. So it's good to remember that all the resources for you to be happy are all ready within you. Um, you are too critical of yourself and should replace negative emotions with self-love. Only when you're kind to yourself can you be good to others. Focus on your own needs more. So there's an affirmation. I am prioritizing self-love, knowing that doesn't make me selfish. So I know I talk about that a lot, but the cards are emphasizing it this week. So then we actually get the Ace of Pentacles. That's also reversed though. So this says you may have lost an opportunity for material growth. If it's caused by external factors, you should focus on the fact that everything happens for a reason and there's no reason to mourn over lost opportunities. If you are the cause by maybe being too stingy and having difficulty getting started, this is your lesson to be less materialistic and focus on your inner abundance and be grateful for the things you already have. Kind of talked about that with Jupiter stationing direct, right? So the affirmation for this is I know that feeling prosperous will bring abundance in my life. So I shift my focus on all the things uh, to all the things I do have. And finally, kind of where are we going for the, you know, after this ooh, heightened week, very big, but I got the nine of the wands, nine of wands, fire. So it says you feel tired from the challenges you had to face in the past. However, you stand tall and ready to face anything that life brings you. Do not feel pessimistic as you have enough courage and power inside yourself to overcome anything. You are disciplined and determined and nothing can bring you down. Know that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I am learning from past experiences, which makes me stronger and wiser. That's the affirmation. So have a wonderful week and um, you know, those cards really kind of speak to the energy of the week. So mwah, happy holidays, happy new year. And I will, well, I might do another video before and I've got a call on, on the 28th with my membership community, The Nest. But otherwise, I will see you in 2024. Mwah.